Today, I'm at my buddy John's house and we're gonna install a floating floor. I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Boom. So this is the room that we're gonna do. This is the floor we're gonna do. The snap together type with the pad on the back side. They sell stuff where you can just do the floor and then put the pad on underneath, but this stuff makes it easier. So, first thing we wanna do is, and John's already got this going, we wanna take the carpet out, or whatever you have, and take all the tack strips off and basically get the floor clean. Take all the staples out, all these little staples that they do at the seams, take those out, and we're gonna get this floor ready. And then we're gonna start on this wall here uh, and then work our way back. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they put this floor down is they put it tight, tight to the wall. And the reason you don't wanna do that is because this is a floating floor and it's gonna move with humidity and temperature changes. So when it expands, if it's tight to that wall and it's tight to that wall, what could happen is these seams are gonna get tighter and tighter and it's gonna have nowhere to go except up and then they could potentially pop out of each other and then you just have loose flooring just hanging around. So you don't wanna do that. And in order to cover that uh, gap, because we're gonna leave a gap on the wall, we're gonna go around and take off all this old baseboard and then put it back down when we're done. The alternative to that is you can put it to the baseboard, put the floor to the baseboard, and then get some molding to cover that gap. Uh, but since we wanna avoid spending more money and cutting new molding and everything and putting it down, we're just gonna try and reuse this stuff. So, you can go along the top here and cut through the old paint and the old caulking, just so you don't mess up the wall too much. And remember you gotta have new flooring here so it's going to raise the baseboard so it'll cover this a little bit and then you can peel the baseboard off see that's where you have to cut it so try and cut all that caulking and paint off so you can avoid that and you can take carefully take these pieces off and you can reuse them so we're going to do that too longest wall in the room and the doorway to the room is right there so I figure it'd be easy that way. Uh, before we start I'm going to check the room for square. So I have a frame and square here and I'm just going to put it in the corner and just get an idea. This is a really small square but if your walls are way out you're going to be able to tell right off the bat that looks pretty good and since we want this to be a straight line uh, I just want to see if the walls go in and out as you go down this way. So I'm going to take a tape measure and mark on one end of the wall. This flooring I think is six and a half inches. I'm going to just mark seven. Make a mark right there. And then I'll go down to this end. Mark the same seven inches. I'm going to give this to John. And he's going to go to that end and hold the chalk line on my mark. And then I'm gonna pull it tight down here, hold it on that same mark. So now, I marked seven inches down here. And I'm just gonna go down the wall. You can see that's just about seven. Go down a little more, that's seven. So what I'm looking for is, let's say this was more like six inches. That would mean the wall is starting to bow out this way. 
So the only thing you would have to figure out is if you have to cut on each end, if you have to rip these pieces of flooring down. Um, but if it's even, or pretty even, then you're good to go. And just keep checking this. Seven, 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 looks good. So now we can start our first row. All right, so most uh, snap together flooring is very similar where you have the tongue right here and you have a groove on this side. So what you wanna, the way you wanna install it is I'm starting here, so I'm gonna install the tongue towards the uh, wall. The other tongue goes into the groove a lot easier than if you did it like this. Cause then you have to go under and it's just not that great. Um, also, that makes it so this end is up against the wall and then this end, you can easily put the other piece into this end. Hmm. That makes sense. So you're putting in the small side yep. here up against the wall. Yep. Okay. And then same with this side. This is sort of the small side on this one. Yep. It's going up against the wall. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Makes sense. That's how you make okay. sense. Yeah. So we got our first couple pieces started here. Um, what I like to do is cut these little pieces of wood and I can use them as a spacer against the wall because you want to have um, a space, like I was saying before, for it to expand and contract. So once you put these here, you're able to push it up against the wall and you can do it over here too if you wanted. So the way these things go together, um, you want to make sure that these are going to be tight so you take a scrap piece of wood and we're not going to hit against this, we want to hit against this edge because it's more solid. So you take a scrap piece of wood and just tap it. And then let's say, okay, that if you look here, you got a gap, then you take your piece of wood and you watch the gap right there as you hammer it right into place and sits down. When you do your starter pieces, you want to make sure that you stagger your seams. And what I mean by that is this is one seam, so the piece is this long, and then the next piece that I put down overlaps that, and that seam is going to be right here. And when you put this another piece in, uh, I, I try to stay away from just going every other because then these seams are going to line up. You basically want the pattern to look random. So I want my seam to be about here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll cut a piece at 14 inches. So again, measure from here, 14 inches. And just to show you, uh, a Sharpie shows up a lot better. On this stuff, the only thing you want to be careful of is sometimes when you make this mark and you cut it and you put it in, you can still see the mark and pencil's a lot easier to clean off than Sharpie is. But this one should be fine because it'll be down here on a base portal cover. Why do you want to stagger the seams? The reason you want to stagger the seams is because if you look at the floor, once it's all done, uh, you're going to be able to tell that there's a line that goes like this and it just looks, it just doesn't look natural. This way, if you do it like this, it looks almost like a hardwood floor where it's all very random. Like this. Sometimes it's easy to put up at an angle and then hammer it and drop down and go into place. So now when you put a piece so you want to put this piece in here and you lock it in this way. There's two ways you can do this. Uh, you can either take your entire row, let's say this is the row, and you can lock this piece in right here and then lock your entire row in and drop it in to the row that's already here. Or you can take this piece like this, 
and make sure there's nothing in the cracks. Get it as tight as you can over here, and then if you kind of wiggle it and push, it'll basically sit in there. So we're gonna get it started in here first. Just make sure the gap goes away. And now you have a big gap right here. And as long as you have a spacer down here, you can go to this end. And then same thing right here. You want to just tap it into place. This one might take more force than the other pieces. Good. All right. So if you do move the floor, um, when you start it out, the first couple of rows are the hardest to get to like kind of stay even with the spacers and everything. If you do push it too much one way or the other, you can just kind of move the entire thing and realign it as you go. So this piece, when I put this in here, I'm gonna run into the door jam. So we're gonna undercut that um, instead of cutting the, the piece of wood or the flooring around the trim, we're gonna undercut this. So you can use a, an undercut handsaw for this. Uh, I prefer this tool. Um, I believe it's called an oscillating tool. This is the, an awesome tool to have. So just put a piece of floor right here and you're gonna cut this even with that piece of floor. And you'll be able to slide the flooring right underneath. Lock that in. And then since I can't go tight to the wall, I'll go as even as I can, like this. Now I gotta cut the last piece in the row. So I'm gonna measure from the wall, again to this um, finished edge right here. And I'm gonna take off about an eighth or a quarter of an inch so I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna cut this at 31, just so I have some space there. This last piece is gonna go here, and as far as doors go, usually you wanna leave um, the floor halfway under the door, and that's where your transition will be between rooms. Um, they're gonna continue this flooring into the hallway, so I'm just gonna leave it right here, and then they can um, continue it into the hallway. You should be able to just drop these in and push them tight where you want them to go, but if there was a gap here and you wanted to make sure these were tight, you can take a, a pry bar or a flat bar and pry it against here and just give it a give it a pry. And I push that floor way that way so I can go over there and lightly push the floor back this way if I wanted to just to line everything back up. And another little tip if it's not going, um, you can hold this like this and then come back here and give it a little tap and it'll pop right into place. Alright, we got our first rope started. We know that we want to stagger our seams, so we'll cut those nice and random to start. We know how to cut our end pieces, and we can go to town now. I'm going to show you a quick little trick here. Uh, you, if you take a scrap piece of this stuff, and a couple of scrap pieces, put this one like this, and this one like this, and then another one like this, and sandwich them, I'm gonna make a block that I can hammer against. This piece right here will go in the groove, and I can hammer on it, and it won't damage this right here, and this will last a lot longer than any of these pieces. As you can see, they get messed up. So I wanna sandwich these together, and then take some screws and screw this way and flip it over and screw on the back side too. All 
All right, now you have a nice block that you can hammer with to get these pieces tight. piece I'm at the closet which gets a little tricky but it turns out that I lucked out here because this piece is gonna go right here and then like this so I think the next piece is just gonna go right under here I undercut this all the way this jam to make it easier and I, I can carry this throughout this way and then on the back sides of this you know, I'm gonna keep going with the floor this way, and then on the back side, I'm just gonna tuck that tongue under the other flooring and snap it in that way and just hammer it into place. And then continue it this way, and then we'll have to do some notching and um, whatever we can to get around this door jam. like I lucked out again where I don't have to notch this and this is the reason why I cut this entire jam and not just this piece and butt it up to here. I cut this entire thing out. Oh, there's some stuff in there. And I cut this entire thing out so now I can slide this under there and then I can pull this tight here and hammer this together. Yeah, we'll get this. It's going. Here. Okay, home stretch, the closet's all done, everything's nice and tight. Uh, had a little trouble with these spacers because the sheetrock uh, is higher um, than the floor. So what that means is as long as you get everything tight, this still has a place to go if it expands. It can go under the sheetrock. Uh, so that's fine, just some of these seams to go under and then some have gaps, but again, as long as it has room to move, you're good. And basically the takeaway is just make sure everything is tight. Um, make sure all your seams are tight so they'll pop out eventually. So I'm gonna move everything, clean all this up and finish this out and then Nail all the baseboard back on.
floor is done. What do you think, John? It's uh, not the best I've ever seen, but oh, wow, it's okay. <laughs> Get it? It's great. Cool. So check out my other videos. What do you think? Put them right here. Yeah, put them right there. Right here. Yeah, right, right. There. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Boom. <laughs> now all you got left, John, is uh, paint the baseboard. Thought we agreed you were gonna do that. All right, I guess I'm gonna paint the baseboard. Thank you.